So apparently, my boy Big Box Sweet just did dopamine driven development. Let's watch this one. Use your monkey brain. That Chat, I know we're already lost. We're not even one second into the video, literally one second into the video, and I already know that you're struggling. Okay, so there's this thing called your brain, right? And if you think and you actually like use it, you can accomplish a lot. I know this is a new topic for you guys, but there's actually room for you to do things, okay? That's it. You can end the video right now. We all know what dopamine is, but if you manage to dodge all the pop science about it for the- Actually, I, have, I literally have no idea what dopamine is. It's this thing in my brain that when you see bright, colorful objects on your screen, you make more of it. And if you get a like, if you get an updo, you get more of it. That's all I know. That's it. I don't know anything else. I have no idea. I don't know how dopamine works. The past few years, let me give you a super quick lesson. Dopamine is the happy part of our brain. Okay. It's the part of our brain that gives us joy, fun, happiness. Dopamine is good, but how do you... Dopamine is an older brother of ketamine. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's insane. Okay. Who do I trust more, chat or big box sweet? I feel like I can't really trust either of them. Also... Huge fan. Loving. I I love how anime anime waifu represents happiness. Ah. Happiness. Isn't that lovely? Dopamine is good, but how do you write code with dopamine? Create systems that give it to you. Let me explain. Many moons ago, I used to be a Java developer for a boring no-name company. I was fully remote, too. I can't explain how hard it is to be a fully remote junior developer. A good office culture... By the way, he's so right on that, and I know that there's a lot of remote maxis. I get it. Hey, type one in the chat if you're a remote maxi. You think all things should be remote at all times. Okay, got a lot of remote maxis. I get it. Prime is jumpy today. I know I haven't been streaming in a long time. I feel so happy to stream. You know, I get all that dope. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, but seriously, there's so much to what he just said right there that I think is so under, under thought through. Rem like, I just can't imagine my early formative years not being shaped and fashioned around other people who either are at my level and a couple other people that are above, like helping guide me, talking, daily lunches, like just the all that extra, all the stuff outside of a job. That just really, really helps make, uh, really, really help made me into the engineer that I am. It's so hard to, to get that while remote. I, I would personally argue you can't get it while you're remote. You just can't because you know what? I would eat lunch with people like four days a week. It's just, it's just so hard to do that. It can make you an incredible programmer, but yeah. unfortunately my coworkers suck too. I would find it <laughs> so hard to get myself to write code for work. I would dread the idea of having to write Java. I'd hate the fact that I'd have to deal with my annoying coworkers nitpicking on GitHub. I hated everything. Coworkers nitpick. Mm. Doesn't this just make you feel good? Also, this should just be like prettier, right? This shouldn't even be an option. Also, who cares? Can we just be like, can we just be real for a second? Let's just pretend you don't have prettier. Okay, you're just a, a basic, you're just a basic vim bitch and you got no, you got no prettier, right? And you have single quotes or double quotes in a language that there is no difference between single or double quotes. There, there literally is none. I still care. Stop caring. Just stop. Just don't even think about it. Makes uh, grepping code harder. Why are you grepping starting with a quote sign? Just grep for source components, right? Like, what are you doing? Have you ever used live grep in your lifetime? Just live grep it. Oh, sorry. You guys probably aren't using NeoVim, the greatest editor of all time, slash telescope TJ's thing. You just wouldn't get it. Also, I hate to break this to you, but it's pretty easy to use a pipe and go quotes or single quotes, right? Anyways, I just don't care. Like, honestly, I don't care. This is just not important enough for me to care. I don't care if you have a 100-length function, if you have a four-length function. I just don't care anymore. The reason why I don't care is because at the end of the day, when I'm making something, the hardest part to understand is not single quotes or double quotes. That is all a distraction and makes zero difference in your brain. The hardest thing to understand is how data is originated how it is manipulated, and how it is displayed. To understand the long process of taking a tree and slowly converting it into another tree, that's the hardest part. And none of that is going to be affected by whether you have single or double quotes. So stop being so intense about it. Damn, people.
damn bitch. Do you live like this? Working on GitHub. I hated everything, but at the same time, it was fully remote. I was a new grad, so I kept chugging along. One day, bored out of my mind, I started editing my terminal, and I made it look pretty cool if you ask me. I went about coding as usual until I noticed I loved the way the git push text would look. Something about it looked so satisfying. I feel seen. Guys. I feel seen. An oh my zish user glazing the text from git push dude i i'm just saying it feels good that's all i'm saying you know it also feels really good when you pull and i i see a bunch of numbers go up it makes me feel happy i would literally write one line of code go into my terminal and push just to see the text again each git push would give me a tiny dopamine hit and eventually that made me code more at work more outside of work until i could leave that job and since then, I found many ways to apply this inside and outside of work. Pipelines. Now hear me out, I used to hate DevOps pipelines. They're slow, at least at all the companies that I've worked at. I do not for the life of me understand YAML. They always break, and our DevOps got- I keep feeling like I should understand YAML, and every time I think I understand it, I do like one thing wrong, and I go, oh, no, actually, I never did understand YAML. Like, I get that YAML's way, way less inconvenient to write than JSON. But at the same time, I'm sitting there wondering, was JSON actually that bad? I don't know. I, 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 never, I, never quite, I never quite understand which one's worse. YAML versus JSON. I can't tell. I know, no being falsy in Norway, dude. I do love that one. That's very funny. That's a, a YAML special, by the way, for those that don't know. Norway is abbreviated to N-O for Norway. And so that means it's false, so you literally cannot have the country of Norway. I is like a 60-year-old Arch user who lives on a farm. But I can't lie. Seeing the animation on GitHub for each stage passing gave me so much satisfaction. This made me want to set up my pipelines for my own projects outside of work, and helped me learn way more about networking, Docker, and config management. As satis By the way, remember right before I started this video, I told you guys the thing you should do? is to find something that interests you and then pursue it. Remember how I said that exact thing? Like, this is literally what he is doing. He found something that makes him excited. So what did pre-watch? I don't, it feels like I pre-watch it. So literally, he's like, oh, I like, hey, hey, I like, I like that this, I like how it works. I want to do it more. I want to figure it out and more. I want to build bigger ones. I want to be really good at it, right? It's crazy. It's crazy how well it works. As fine as it was when all the pipeline stages passed, it was even better when the action failed, because I saw that as a challenge. And I always knew why it would fail, because of one thing, testing. I know everyone hates testing, but it's a super important part of delivering good software. Okay, it's a part of delivering software. Now, it doesn't really matter what kind of testing you do. Unit tests, integration tests, end-to-end -end tests, all testing frameworks come with the best thing invented by mankind. Before we know that, I don't know the difference between functional integration and end-to-end -end testing. Banger animations. I swear, every testing framework I've used, or even just using the IDE testing, has absolutely amazing animations. There's something so satisfying about seeing the green tick even more so when you're overcoming a failed test. And although it's kind of useless, but getting 100% code coverage hits so different. But you know what also has... Is this one of those moments in life you realize you have autism? Is this like, is this how it happens? Damn. Juicy animations? Task managers. Everyone wants to build a to-do list, but they forget how satisfying it is to use one. I normally just use a markdown list, but you can also use project management tools like Jira, Linear, or GitHub projects. But the act of tracking your okay, I don't have I don't have autism. Never mind. Never mind. Just joking. I I I'm joking. I don't have it. Tasks and finishing them is beyond satisfying. If you're working on personal projects or you're a student, combining all three methods gives you a pretty good understanding of modern software development. The idea is to find something so simple, like seeing an animation, ticking off a task, something that makes your monkey brain go happy, and use that as leverage to do hard stuff. We have all these methods. You know, it's one thing that I think he really understated right here is also there's one there's one more part of this diagram that I think is really important. Yeah, I made that last night. Not a big deal. Thought it was pretty funny. Uh, there's one more really important part to this, which is you have to have you have your comfort zone, right? So he had his comfort zone right here, and then he had something called the edge, which I know a bunch of you edge lords out there know what exactly what I'm talking about, right? You have the edge, and then you have like. The difficulty, right? The, the the unknown zone, the difficulty zone. That's supposed to be a D, but it says the P zone. You get you get the idea. Difficulty zone. One thing that's missing down here is this magical item, ignorance. My ability to underestimate how difficult the problem 
is going to be is single-handedly one of my greatest like force multipliers in my life. I don't know what it is. I could build that in a weekend, turns into 10 weekends, but nonetheless, you build it. And then it feels awesome. Like one time, uh, me and a friend built a multi-exchange crypto arbitrage bot, and it made thousands of dollars. It's just, unfortunately, I needed I needed millions of dollars to be able to make it work. It was great. I just couldn't ever make enough money to actually make it work. It was fantastic. And then also the entire market tanked and everything happened, and then I was unable to. I Turns out I, I, I didn't outperform them. The market always wins at the end of the day, so I just quit doing it. But uh, nonetheless, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun, you know? We have all these methodologies to make creating software easier. Domain-driven development, test-driven development, meme-driven development. But rarely are systems designed to think about the experience of the person making the software. I mean, as much as I love software engineering, the idea of building an integration service for a data analytics pipeline that hooks into a CRM and now has to have AI in there somewhere? Yeah, that makes me want to become a potato farmer. But someone's got to do it. If you're ever bored at work, Find something new, whether it's some cool new terminal tool, a to-do list, or a simple change to the font in your editor. Make your tools and environment work for you. Another way to get dopamine. He is right, though. Like, this is all great advice, honestly. I like to say it a little bit different, which is that I think that in every task, if you look at it as yet another chore, this is one of those big revelations I had at Netflix. After having burnout, you know, I spent the next two years on the Originals team doing a bunch of stuff. And I realized like there's this kind of this magic thing I could do, which is that I could look at every task as like, oh, this is annoying. Or I could look at every task as, oh, this is actually like an opportunity for me to do something completely different, something unusual, something that is going to be kind of this cool thing. And I just would constantly try to find the joy in work as opposed to finding every reason why it sucked. Because there's always, like, no matter where you work, there's a hundred reasons why something sucks. I don't care what your job is. I don't care if you're writing the Swift language, or now, I guess, Mojo. Latiner's writing Mojo. I'm sure there's a bunch of just shit that were, uh, happens at Mojo that's just unfun. And it just, like, it doesn't, it, there, there is no end to the thing sucking. And so I realized early on that if I could just learn how to be happy and learn how to enjoy the things I'm working on and just kind of change my perspective. Even if the thing I'm doing is boring and not that much fun, I could actually have a nice time doing it. It could make me feel good. I could be really happy about it. And that's just something I've been really trying to figure out how to do more of, which is not look at all the negatives, but look at all of the positives and reinforce the things I want to see. Because that doesn't mean I have to work hard. It doesn't mean I have to be a workaholic. It just means that I simply get to like live a life in a more positive light. And sometimes that's that and to me that's not even dopamine, right? That's whatever the higher order joy is, right? The the thing that takes a long time for you to become happier and happier and generally upticks your level because I feel like I feel like whatever life is, however it works, I can't explain with chemicals and nor am I a psychologist to really understand these things. There's like a baseline in life. And I feel like it's really easy for baselines either to be going down or to be going up. But if every single time you do something, you're like, oh, this sucks. And then you kind of finish it. Oh, this sucks. Oh, this sucks. I feel like generally life just starts to suck more and more. You just feel worse and worse and worse. But if you just attempt at all to find anything good or joyful in it, I think you can go, oh, that was fun. Okay, this part sucks. But hey, it's actually fun if you think of it this way. And I think you can just start getting like at least remain flat or start to go up in just general happiness. Uh, bro, Dr. K would fill in the neuroscience and agree on everything. Maybe, hopefully, delusions. It could be delusions. But bro, isn't all of life like... So much of life is just difficult task after dis difficult task. And so you can look at it as, oh, difficult task after difficult task. Or you could be like, how am I going to learn in this situation? How am I going to do this situation really well? What other tools within the company I have never used? How am I going to, like, there's so many other questions you could be asking yourself as opposed to being just so locked in on things being negative, which they generally are. Like there's plenty of reasons to look at something negative. It's just reframing my perspective, right? That's all I'm trying to do is just have a better perspective because I may not be able to control the situation, but I can most certainly control my perspective on said situation. Like right now, here's a good example. I'm starting this kind of media company, right? TJ's joined in. I have, I now have, uh, what's it called? I have four employees, and I'm trying to learn to create something big, which also means by that very nature, I'm having to not program as much as I would like to program. 
that's been very difficult for me because I love programming, which means that I'm having um, I'm having to take a step back from the things I really like and try to focus more on the things that need to get done. And that's really hard, right? That's really, really hard step for me to do. But instead of looking like, hey, I'm going to become really angry, I'm trying to look at it as like, hey, here's an opportunity for me to learn something I don't understand. And I think that's like a really positive thing. It's just something that, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been genuinely super hard for me because I am an IC at heart, if that makes sense. Just what I want to be. I don't really care about a lot of the big pictures. I like, I only care about two sides. I either care about the smallest side, like the IC side or the biggest side. Like I, I don't, I don't want to be just like a manager. Okay. You know, I used to love big box. I take it back. I take it back. This video. And thank you for your time. I am big. That's how you're supposed to end the video. Big box. Why did you say your name at the, you know, you know, this, like, this is how it's always been. You can't. You can't just do that, okay? Like, there's there's we there's things we rely on from you. Anyways, the name is, is the learning gen. You should go learning.